from Western New York. We've already shown you Juan Rie Green averaging 20 points per game. Malcolm Lemon, Antoine Mason, the son of Anthony Mason, former NBA All-Star. Amin Tanksley and Scooter Gillette. Niagara comes in with an overall record of 6-9. and nine. They are 1-2 and two in MAC play. Meanwhile, for Iona, the Gales, a perfect 3-0 and o to start the conference season. And there you see Scott Machado at the point, along with the former Arizona Wildcat, Lamont Momo Jones. Sean Armand coming off an incredible offensive performance earlier this week in Madison Square Garden. And an inside, Taj Ridley and Mike Glover, the preseason conference player of the year. There you see tonight's officials, Mike Hicks, Ray Perone, and Andrew Morata. And we are set for basketball on a Friday night just 20 miles northeast from Times Square in New York City here in New Rochelle, the home of Scott Machado and the High Flying Gales, the fourth leading scoring team in the country, Tim. The Purple Eagles will try to slow that man down. And it's nearly impossible. One of the things that's made him such a great player and why these NBA scouts are here is that he has a motor. He brings it night in and night out. His habits are professional, and that's what makes Iona such a special team. So many weapons for Iona. These two teams met once earlier this season, and the Gales blew out the Purple Eagles. That was out in western New York last month. This is Machado with a basketball, averaging 10.3 assists per game and 13.3 points per game. He can knock down the open shot, although that one was way off the mark. Jones took it away. And Momo Jones off the mark on his first attempt. Taj Ridley. Three opportunities, 0 for 3 to start for a team that makes over half of its shots from the floor. One of the things that's going to be interesting to see how they come out. I know most coaches don't want to be three-point happy, and it looked like Machado and, uh, and Jones got off. They wanted to fire off quickly here. Well, after shoot-around this morning talking to Tim Kloos, the Iona head coach, you and I were talking about the fact that they have not played a game in this gymnasium for 39 days. They're pumped. They want to play well in front of the home crowd. Sometimes you've got to caution against being too hyped. Here's Armand, a little bit short. This is Juan Ye Green, 6'3", freshman from Philadelphia. As mentioned, leads the Mac in scoring at 20 per game. He spins away from Machado. Juan Ye Green, first on the board. And that's always a good feeling, especially if you're Joe Mahalik. There's a lot of apprehension in his first four minutes, and you want to draw early blood. Niagara sitting in the zone. The lob inside the Glover. Nice and efficient way to attack the zone. You just throw over the top of it. Antoine Mason being guarded by Jones. Here goes Mason into the lane. Gets his own miss and lays it in. Antoine Mason, 6'3", redshirt freshman who played his high school ball. Just a long three-point shot from where we sit at New Rochelle High School. You can see Iona's offense right now. It looks a little bit stagnant. Everyone's standing up. And this is not what's uh, typical of this type of team. They want to get it, attack gaps, and go. Shot clock down to five. Machado with a deep three. And there's the first field goal of the night for the Gales. Again, this is a team averaging nearly 86 points per game. Coming off a 95-point performance the last time out against Siena. Nice job of breaking the pressure. The layup good by another one of the nice-looking freshmen for the Purple Eagles, Amin Tanksley. Tim, this Niagara team is dominated by the freshman. 
and the underclassmen in general. And so far, three field goals, one each by three of the starting freshmen for Niagara. Well, if you're Niagara, you like it because those guys are taking it to the basket. With young groups, you want to make sure that they're able to sustain it. How you do is by scoring easy buckets. Well, there's the dean of MAC head coaches, Joe Mahalik, as you see in his 14th season. Most wins in the history of this league. And Tim Kloos has had a terrific year and a half as head coach of Iona. Armand shows the stroke. One of the things the other night when they played Siena in Madison Square Garden, he made 10-3, setting a MAC and an Iona record. But that, even that stroke, it was dead on. You were at that ball game at the Garden the other night, Tim. What did you most take away from watching Char Armand as Mason knocks down the three? Well, one of the things that Machado is great at in Iona, they find guys, especially when they're hot, like that play right there. When you got someone hot, you go right back to it. Ridley with his first two. Foul in the front court goes against Ridley. Oh. Well, for the last two years, the high-flying aerial assault of Scott Machado to Mike Glover has been dominant in the MAC. Off to a quick start here tonight. Uh, at Niagara, a guy that played for Coach Westhead at LaSalle, his philosophy is get it going, put pressure on them by scoring. He was an assistant coach at LaSalle for 17 years and helped to recruit a number of future NBA players. Most notably, Lionel Simmons, who was the National Player of the Year. And he has continued a Philly pipeline of recruiting up to Niagara. Here's Mason. He has had the hot hand early. Wide open look for Momo Jones. And that hit the shot clock above the basket, so it turns back over to Niagara. This is what you gotta love if you're Joe Mahalik. Here goes Mason again. He goes baseline, he creates an opening, and finishes the play. Seven points early for Antoine Mason. Tanksley a little long. Rebound pulled down by Malcolm Lemons. Now this is a Niagara team that struggled a bit out of the gate, but they were missing two of their key players who are now back, including Malcolm Lemons. To miss the first 10 games of the season because of mononucleosis. There goes Lemons. Looks strong there, but can't get the roll. Machado puts it up and in. He can hurt you in so many ways. That time, it was by dribble penetration. Heads up play by Machado. Well, he is one of the 20 finalists for the Bob Cousy Award that will be given to the top point guard in the country later this year. Foul is Wanye Green took it strong to the hoop. Again, when you struggle a little bit, you want to make sure you come down and you try to make something happen. Again, a high percentage shot bullies his way into the lane. And it has been a real transformation over the last couple of years for Scott Machado under Tim Kluse. Well, we mentioned that Antoine Mason is the son of Anthony Mason. And there's Mason in the house, longtime New York Nick. Still lives in the area and comes and checks out his son playing as often as possible. Well, Antoine Mason used to play for the Metro Hawks based out of the Bronx, New York. And one of the things about young Mason is that he's, com he's tremendously competitive. And you're going to need that if you're going to be successful at this Division I level. Pass knocked away. Here comes Green. Bad pass to the high post. Turner does a nice job to gather. Still fighting for the basketball. And a jump ball. And the possession arrow stays with Niagara. Saturday, ESPNU has a terrific day of college basketball, starting with three top 15 teams in action. First at noon Eastern, number three Duke and Seth Curry opening ACC play on the road. Then at 2 Eastern, 15th ranked Kansas has its first conference road test. At 4 Eastern, Notre Dame and number 10 Louisville do battle. And then at 8 Eastern, number 18 Murray State looking to remain undefeated against Austin P. I would not want to be Brian Gregory right now. It's never good to play the Duke Blue Devils off of a loss, especially Brian his first year down at Georgia Tech. 
Wanye Green with a chance for three. See, Joe Mahalik really likes Wanye Green. You can see right there the confidence he has in pulling up. Here's a freshman that's leading the Mac in scoring. A boatload of ability. And he's a young man that through 10th grade had some Big East and Atlantic 10 schools showing interest in him. But he suffered a foot or an ankle injury. And some of that interest waned. Joe Mahalik stayed on it and wound up getting himself a real prize. Well, he played for Paul Romantic. Great coach at Archbishop Carroll down there in Philadelphia. And one of the things like that, when you're in a program, you're constantly learning and you're getting the right tutelage, and these guys end up having pretty good success in college careers. 13-33 remaining first half here in New Rochelle, New York. Doug Sherman along with Tim O'Toole. Niagara with a four-point lead. Terrific move by Machado, and he's got a chance for three. One of the things that happened today at walkthrough, and three things Timmy Clues is definitely concerned about. You don't want your team coming in complacent, and you expect your seniors to be able to help lead the way, and Machado's doing that. But when you come off a great game against Siena in the guard and you get a win, you haven't been home in the last 38 days because you've had a brutal non-conference, and you've beaten this team by 36 a month ago. You want to make sure your team comes in ready to roll. And I think that's the concern that they're having right now, and Machado is carrying them. Well, as a former head coach, Tim, how do you get your team not to overlook a Niagara club that back in December you beat 98-62 and against whom you shot 72% in the second half? Well, you remind them to stay in the present. And this is what Timmy Clues did. He was hammering that home. You stay in the present. What's in the past is over. you got to bring it today. Machado with eight points now to lead Iona. Back to a one-point ball game. Down on the shot clock, Green bottled up, looking for some help. Pass knocked out of bounds, Niagara will keep it with six on the clock. One of the things young Green is going to learn right there is you do not want to pick up the ball in that high trapping area up here on the left wing. Lemons has his pocket pick. Take away by Jermel Jenkins just off the bench for Iona. Turnover Machado. Randy DeZouvre and Kyle Smythe have come into the game as well for Iona. 15-foot shot. Nothing but net for Malcolm Lemons. DeZouvre back out Machado. Extra pass. Smythe. One of the defensive keys Joe Mahalik talked about earlier was deception. When you're playing D, how can we slow Iona down? Throw different looks. Try to double in on the post and make it hard, and they've done a great job up until this point. One of the things Joe also mentioned is he wants to keep this pace at around 70. That's the number for the game. Anything north of 70, and he thinks his Purple Eagle's in trouble. Foul on the shot, and Mason will go to the free throw line when we come back. And when we come back, we will talk about the senior statesman among Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Ability to teach. And we talked to him earlier at the shoot-around. When you have such a young club with freshmen like they have, how do you keep them going on a day-to-day -day basis? Because you, know, you don't want to get too high and you don't want to get too low. But Joe's, you know, again, his wherewithal, his knowledge, his experience, and his positive attitude really gives these guys a lot of life. And the only senior on the roster, Paul Kowalski, does not play very much, so it really is just dominated by the freshmen and sophomores. And actually, the uh, freshmen score over 80% of their points. It really is something. One of the things both of these coaches offer their players, you hear about an attitude of gratitude. Both programs have an attitude of latitude. They have the green light on both ends of the court. And among the things Coach Mahalik said to you, Tim, during shoot-around today was he felt for his team to have a chance. As you mentioned before, they've got to hold Iona to 70 points or less. And so far, their defense has definitely 
play a part in slowing down Iona somewhat. Easier said than done, and the two keys, one from an offensive standpoint, he wanted to make sure this young cl club valued the ball. You cannot afford to turn it over because possessions are important. And then the other thing was defensively, keep throwing them different looks and hoping that they, you know, they mess up. Two-point shot way off the mark for Wanye Green, who by and large through the first nine minutes had been playing very much under control, hadn't taken any bad shots. Two on one, Jordan shovel pass. And an offensive foul called against Wanye Green. Coach Mahalik up there doing jumping jacks on the sideline, not too fired up about that play. Did look like a good break, and let's see if he was above the arc, which he is. Established his position, it was a good call. Well, you know, Joe Mahalik able to jump a lot higher than he could this past summer. He's dropped 30 pounds since Labor Day. I thought it was the P90X workouts he was doing, but, you know, <laughs> Joe is a mathematician, and he's been really watching his calories. Looks great. Says he's back to his playing weight. And back in the day at LaSalle. 10.45 remaining first half. Niagara with a five-point lead over the MAC frontrunners and preseason favorites from Iona. You can even see right now, Iona's deep into the shot clock with seven to go here. Desouvre off the mark. One and done. Nice job by Green to grab the board. Momo Jones will check back in for Iona. Lemons also comes back in for Niagara. In looking at the statistics before the ball game, Tim, you were looking and seeing that Iona is not a team that really out-rebounds or out-shoots its opponents by that great a margin, but there was one big difference. Well, the one thing is they beat you over a period of time, but they definitely do not turn the ball over. They have almost 100 more assists than turnovers, and what that means is you're going to be highly efficient on the offensive end. So it's no mistake. What they want to do is they want to put points on that board and do it in a lightning-fast fashion. And they shoot for a high percentage, but they allow a high percentage. Rebounds are about even on the year. Machado with five to shoot gets it into Glover. Glover's the guy that really needs to start stepping up in this game for the Gales. There's not much of an answer for Niagara with him in there. Foul called against Momo Jones. And there you see the numbers for Tim Kloos's club. He is a guy who uh, brings some different philosophies to his offense, which works so well. Timmy Kloos played for Frankie Morris, a Hall of Fame guy at St. Agnes High School in Rockville Center. He was a lacrosse coach, and his whole offensive philosophy was based on a sideline break where you just keep attacking. He credited Coach Morris for a big part of his philosophy, and the Gales play by it. Well, Tim is a Long Islander through and through, played his college ball at both St. John's and then at Hofstra on the island. Nice looking lefty shot by Lemons. And this is really his first job off of Long Island between being a high school coach and a community college coach and then a Division II coach at CW Post. But it's interesting, you know, Long Island, as you know, Tim, is a real hotbed for lacrosse so that he would take lacrosse principles and apply them to basketball, I find quite fascinating. It really was, and he was one of the greatest high school coaches in the history of New York. Coach Morris was. Billy Donovan played at that same high school. The three by Jenkins pulls Iona back within two. Foul called. Well, we mentioned Tim Kloos. There he is, back in the day, working the hair, back in the early 80s at Hofstra. There's some of what we were talking about, a Long Islander through and through. Long Island, New York is where he is from, and uh, he's got some terrific stories. Now, he's not always been a basketball player or coach. He was a police officer on Long Island for three years and also owned a bar restaurant for a decade. So he's kind of a, a renaissance man from Long Island. That's a great call. Timmy is a renaissance man. Lemons for three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Taj Ridley has come back in for the Gales, replacing Glover. Three-point bucket is good. Jenkins is off the bench with six quick points. This is an Iona team, Tim, that has multiple weapons from the perimeter that can come off the bench and give you a lot. They really do. And when you look at the lineup right now with Jenkins and Machado and Smythe and Momo Jones, you've got all guards, and they can keep hitting you with a lot of different combinations. Scooter Gillette, strong to the bucket. And a blocking foul will send the 6'8 junior from Philadelphia to the line shooting two. And you got to be happy right now, especially if you're Joe. His team is being really efficient with the ball. Keeping this thing in check. Right on point for that. That's Maryland team you get a chance to see on Sunday night that lost and actually got blown out down in Puerto Rico early this season by the same Iona Gales. No, well, you got Mark Turgeon has just taken over for the legendary Gary Williams. Going up against Mark Godfrey, former ESPN analyst, also Murray State coach. But this win, a 26-point Iona win, marked the largest margin of victory against a Power 6 opponent in program history. And it's the first win against an ACC team since defeating North Carolina at MSG about a decade ago. And it is the most notable win, but when you take into account that T. Sean Howard and Alex Len were not with the Terps at that point. They have since joined the team. Really, that game out in Colorado was their biggest win so far this year. Well, what Iona's done a great job is loading that schedule. And this is what Rich Enzer and, and the folks in the MAC want these teams to do. If you want to be more than a one-bid league, you've got to go play people. And Iona's schedule from Denver to St. Joe's to Richmond to, to beating Maryland to playing Purdue, they've done the things they need to do to, to develop a pretty good dossier. Now, well, Niagara coach Joe Mahalik told us earlier this afternoon that there's no question in his mind that Iona's best win this year was that victory at Denver. And Denver is a team that is 71 in the RPI. And Iona went out there in the midst of a brutal road stretch and beat them in overtime on a DeZouvre jump shot that beat the buzzer. There was an article today talking about the Pac-12 and how it's gone down. And they said the best win in the Pac-12 was California beating that same Denver team. Sean Armand back into the ball game for Iona, coming off his 32-point performance Monday. There is the stroke that got him that big show. And it's amazing. You can check out when he releases it. That thing is dead on. And Iona's a team that feeds off that momentum. Three-point shots, dunks, steals. Those things create uh, energy, and Armand's a guy that can deliver it. Marvin Jordan with the basketball, sat out. Niagara's last game with a bruised knee coming off the bench here tonight. Blocking is the call against Lemons. Good job by Lemons right there trying to fight for that rebound. He was one against four. You see him battling because everyone on Iona wants to do what? They want to take off and fly. Tough call for Lemons, but a great job of battling. First foul on Lemons, fourth against Niagara. And as you see, Niagara in the bonus already with seven fouls called against Iona. You can see that on the uh, graphic at the bottom of your screen, the word bonus under the 26 for Niagara. 6.20 remaining first half. Machado steps through the double team. Good defense by Niagara continuing to make Iona uncomfortable in the half court. Diggs Moikobu comes into the game for the first time for Iona. A little used 6'7 junior forward from Seattle. You see Taj Ridley disappointed as he took a seat on the bench. Interesting thing right now, Timmy Cruz mentioned how he wanted to stay with an eight-man rotation early on. He's already gone to ten. Great move by Wanye Green, but that means he's frustrated with, with the guys that he's put out there on the floor. And here are the oohs and ahs from the home crowd for that move made by Green. Armand again. Zubre got the rebound but gave it away, and here comes another leak out for the Purple Eagles. 
Nice job, Machado, to get back. But then Machado gives it right back. And an over and back violation. They say that Lemons had possession of the basketball in the front court before he crossed the midcourt strike. No, I think that was a good call, but it was really set up because one guy didn't quit on the play, and that was Machado. But talk about another guy who's not quitting on the play is Juan Ye Green, and this is why he's the leading scorer in the MAC. He just attacks. Now, Juan Ye Green in MAC play, averaging 26 points per game through their first three games this season here's a little different wrinkle that Joe Mahalik is throwing at Iona right now it's kind of like a 1-3-1 one, one. they're throwing a lot of different looks Momo Jones averaging 15 per game Moikovu blocked on the putback Here goes Mason, and a blocking foul against Jones. Well, you can certainly see a little bit in his uh, body type and the way he moves. Mason, like his, uh, like his old man used to do in the NBA, strong to the bucket, big upper body. Antoine Mason listed at 6'3", 210. He's a redshirt freshman. He suffered a stress fracture three games into last season. He's gotten off to a terrific start. But he wound up sitting out the rest of the year. And there is Antoine Mason averaging this year 13.7 points per game. And what you would call Mason is a power guard. There was one on one and everybody stopped playing. They thought it was two. Only the eighth team foul against Iona. So the one and one. Moikovu. Bringing some energy off the bench. Right, and here are the little things that Machado does, and he does so well. Again, it goes back to the other end. You got a lot of young guys. All of a sudden, no one played that basketball after the missed free throw. Well, Iona raced it up the floor. Machado was the guy that knifed his way into the lane. Found him in the, in the lane for a bucket. Strong rebound by Joe Thomas, a redshirt freshman from Miami. Mason, tough shot, rims out. Moikobu again, and he triggers the break. Armand finds the cutter somehow, and just off the bench, Rashad James. Well, clearly Tim Kloos looking for energy and a combination because the starters did not really get it done in the early minutes. But this is one of the things that's a luxury for Iona. They have tremendous depth, and he's been able to go to that, and the bench has played great. This is Iona's first lead since 12-11. Foul called as Jordan put up the three-point shot. Well, the Gales have imposed their will thanks to a couple of reserves. You remember those scars and you show your team the films and you try to figure out all right, what are ways we can do so we can get better in the next game and obviously these guys have come out they have new, uh, different bodies out there playing but they've had a more of a sense of purpose and it showed Marvin Jordan at the line hits the first along those same lines though Tim is there a point where you might not want to show your team them getting blown out six weeks earlier for fear of hurting their confidence absolutely and this is why we talked earlier about Joe and his brilliance is his ability to teach you got to have the pulse of your team figure out where they are and then temper you know if it was because they were lazy you can get on them but if it's also because of just being mismatched then, then you kind of you explain it in a different manner Niagara back on top 31 30 now you see 12 lead changes so far the biggest lead so far tonight five by Niagara Iona back on top thanks to Momo Jones Momo scored 20 in that game up at Niagara. The junior from Harlem who transferred back home after helping lead the Arizona Wildcats all the way to the Elite Eight last spring. Momo got a hand on that one. Machado always with his head on a swivel. Tough pass. Jones tries to save it. 
And another turnover gives it back to Niagara. You can see Machado. He's always looking to find his players that are in their proper spots. That time, Momo Jones was waiting on that left wing. Scott Machado's got eyes all over his head, and he's going to find you if you're open. Turner, deep three. And a rebounding foul called against Joe Thomas. Well, this Niagara team coming off a, a very important win Monday down in Baltimore. They closed the game on a 9-0 run to rally and beat a very good Loyola team, 66-61. Joe Mahala told us today that this was in his 13 years in the MAC. By far, this was his hardest start to open a season. When you think about preseason, Fairfield and Iona are the tops of the league. Loyola's off to a great start. You come on the road, you got to deal with these guys, and then you got to go to Siena, which is another really tough place to play. They've been baptized by fire. And by the way, earlier tonight, Siena beat Fairfield 73-60. Jones, Machado, and Armand around the perimeter for the Gales. Here is Jones, wide open look. Niagara basketball. Now this crowd here in New Rochelle has gotten used to the up-tempo Iona Gales and so far tonight we've really not been able to have any sort of sustained action for the Gales for the fans to really get behind it and we talked earlier about the one-on-one -on -one and these two offensive teams and you wondered how Joe was going to be able to pull it off because you don't want to just get into a track meet with the Iona Gales but they've done a great job of, of being disciplined in their offensive sets and yet still being aggressive nice look by Green Green slipped and his foot went out of bounds, so the Purple Eagles give it back to the Gales. Now, even in that possession right down, right there, what Niagara's been able to do, they're getting good looks. And this is what Joe said. These guys are fresh and getting a lot of experience right now. When they evolve and when they grow up a little bit, now all of a sudden those buckets are going to be going down, and then they're going to be a force to be reckoned with as these guys get older. And as you talked about, Iona and Fairfield are easily the two favorites to win this league and then after that from three through ten you can make a case for a number of teams certainly niagara in that mix armand strong rebound jones he's not real tall but he can get up momo jones listed at six feet iona on top by four and timeout call Sunday night, ESPNU sets the table for the All-State BCS National. One of the suburbs of New York City. Tim Plus in his second year as head coach of the Iona Gales. And this has been one of the marquee, if not the marquee program in the 30-plus years of this conference. Iona has seven times represented the back of the NCAA tournament as recently as 2006. And they're deep in the shot clock, as you just referenced. You know, even if there's five on the shot clock, it's going to be Niagara's ball. But you you just basically got a layup. And again, they're just young and they're rushing through it. The ball did not hit the rim, so no reset. Joe Mahalik asked Ray Perone to reset it, and Ray rightly said no. The ball did not hit the rim. Mason puts it up. Under 30 seconds remaining in the half. Takeaway by Lemons. And instead of pulling it out, he goes right after the basket. That gives Iona one more chance. Machado holds up his right index finger, and they will hold for one. The nation's leader in assists looking for one more before the intermission. One second. Got to fire away. Again, the Niagara defense, the story. Really is. When you're sitting there trying to keep a team under 70 and you got them at 35 and a half, that's exactly what Joe Mahalik was hoping. Preseason conference player of the year, Mike Glover. He scored only four points on two of three shooting. He picked up a couple of fouls and so played only 12 minutes. 
And an immediate turnover. DeZouvre gets the start in the second half, and the Purple Eagles cash in with Malcolm Lemons. Right there, another little junk defense by Joe. What I mean by junk is they threw a little trap action. Just keep throwing them different looks to keep Iona backing up. And you can even see where their offense is right now. You're looking at it's about 25 feet to start. There's how you get Glover involved. Mike Glover, a 6'7 senior from the Bronx, who originally went to Seton Hall and has had a prolific year and a half run so far here with Iona College. Here's Mason with Lemons, Tanksley, Gillette, and Green. Here comes Machado. He's got DeZouvre and Armand on his left. It's the three-point specialist. Armand off the mark. He is two for seven from distance so far tonight. inside to DeZouvre. Machado's pass, I think, was intended to Armand, but Glover took it, and he was fouled. We talked earlier how Glover needs more touches at the onset, and here you see Machado finding them. He's gotten a few this half. He got one on the defensive end, which is another way to get touches on the rebound. And on this trip, so three out of the four possessions Iona's had, they've got a conscientious effort to get him the ball. So far on the night, eight points, seven assists for Machado. Glover now with seven points. You see Joe Thomas checking in for Niagara. Replacing Scooter Gillette. Mike Glover's brother was Anthony Glover, the great player at St. John's, now playing professionally overseas. And Mike, just like his brother Anthony, what distinguished those guys was they were warriors. And the definition of a warrior is that they take nothing from the tribe, only add to it. And older brother Anthony, as you mentioned, still playing professionally. He's in Argentina this season. Tanksley has his pocket pick. Momo Jones was there waiting for him. Nice follow by Glover. Timeout, Purple Eagles. And it's amazing right off the bat. So we're talking four of the five possessions. Glover has touched it twice in the offense, but twice on different ends. And sometimes players like him settled back in. Momo Jones called for the personal foul. Got him bottled up pretty good in the backcourt. Pressure broken. Lemons with numbers. And he goes right up and over Glover. Malcolm Lemons has had an unbelievable game up until this point. He didn't play in the first uh, contest. And Joe has really high expectations for him. Out of Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. Now in double figures, Lemons has 11. Machado will go to the line. Well, Machado's very familiar with... Tim Cluse, when he was a ninth grader in high school, Cluse was the varsity head coach out in Long Island. And while he never played a game for Coach Cluse back then, he certainly practiced with the varsity and had the influence then. But it wasn't until last year when Cluse took over this program where he was able to really get across the message to Machado. And Machado, in conjunction with a terrific experience over the summer, playing for the Brazilian national team, has really expanded his game. It's almost like the laws of attraction when you think about Machado. He goes to St. Mary's and has to play for Timmy, and then Timmy ends up leaving. And then by fate, these guys re reconnect here at Iowa. Marvin Jordan checked into the game for Niagara. Screen and roll was set up nicely, but Thomas never saw the pass coming. Foul against Niagara. 
Don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you're banging that drum. But again, it was Glover that came up with the steal. And one of these things, because Glover is a high-energy type player, when he gets involved, he'll be involved in every facet, whether it's on the defensive end, closing out, blocking shots, dunks. He's a catalyst in so many different ways that if you're Niagara, you wanted that sleeping dog to lock. Well, as a junior, he averaged over 18 points and 10 rebounds per game. And Tim, he's the first Gale since a guy named Jeff Ruland to have done that for an entire season. Ruland, of course, went on to a successful NBA career. Under 10 to shoot. Desouvre looking for the shot, and he is fouled. Foul against Wanye Green. And that is his third personal foul. And so Randy Desouvre, senior from Montreal, go back at the line. As mentioned in the first half, his biggest shot of the year was the one to beat Denver on the road earlier this year. Saturday, ESPNU has a terrific day of college basketball, starting with three top 15 teams in action. Beginning at noon, third-ranked Duke opens ACC play on the road. Then at 2 Eastern, 15th-ranked Kansas has its first conference road test. And then number 10, Louisville, will take on Notre Dame at 4 Eastern. I'll also tell you again that Murray State will look to stay undefeated 8 o'clock tomorrow on ESPNU. Machado called for the foul. One of the things that Joe Mahalik's guards have always been over the years have been really aggressive. They use these ball screens and they're always looking to attack. When you think about the history of this program, when you think about the guys like Alvin Cruz and Brooks, Darden, Demont Stewart, Tyrone Lewis, they attack you. First two of the night for Joe Thomas. Nice look into DeZouvre. He gets tied up and has it taken away. Good hands by Malcolm Lemons again. Joe Mahalik screaming from the bench, easy, easy, easy. And Marvin Jordan, his sophomore guard, finally listens and backs it out. Is Antoine Mason, see if he listened to his father. Turner off the mark, and here comes Glover. Drops to Machado, the lob back to Glover, who didn't seem to anticipate in time. And it's interesting. Glover is one of the few forwards that can start a break. You get the rebound and you take it going distance. That's not easy to do. Time out. Here. Or a point guard like a, a speedy Claxton. They're always looking for guys with high basketball IQ. And these two guys have it. And you see Doug Gottlieb, one of our co-workers at ESPN.com, has Machado projected as a number 12 overall pick in this year's NBA draft. And I'll tell you, Tim, Doug and I did the five-hour energy Puerto Rico tip-off this year, and Iona was in that field, went two and one, played very well. Why He's going to have a chance to play basketball professionally and hopefully make a nice career for himself. Well, in the season opener against Purdue, a game that Iona nearly knocked off the Boilermakers, losing 91-90 on a Robbie Hubble last-minute shot. Scott Machado had 14 points and 11 assists. And then in the next game against Western Michigan, Machado continued to dazzle the NBA scouts with 17 points and 15 assists. And you're looking at an assistant coach on the Iona staff that has a long history with Machado and actually can put him in his place from time to time. Nice story right there about Gil Montalvo. Also played at St. Mary's for Timmy Clues, but he was a senior when Scott was a freshman. And one of these guys was not afraid to kind of take Machado under his wing. And it's funny how they've grown up because Scott still looks at Coach... Uh, uh, Montalvo as, as one of those guys who's like a big brother. And as somebody like yourself who coached as an assistant at big time programs like Duke and Syracuse and had a good run at Fairfield as the head coach, what's it like to be able to 
connect with a player on that level where they know that you know what you're talking about and they know your history on the floor. Well, they're so fortunate when you got guys like that that think his coach is on the floor. One of the things Coach Krzyzewski talks about all the time is that leadership is plural. And this is kind of what Niagara is struggling with a little bit this year because all of their players are young. You don't have that experience that makes them leaders. But when you got Machado out there, again, leadership is plural and these guys do it by committee. What a shoot. Mason on the run. No. Thomas kept it alive. More white shirts than purple shirts, though. But they say Glover was the last to touch, so Niagara will keep possession. Although it looked like Thomas was the one whose foot was out of bounds touching the basketball. Either way, it's Niagara possession. Right now, you're in a danger zone if you're Niagara. you got to start figuring out ways to score points again. That's one way. That is one way, because what you want to do is start backing down Iona a little bit. They were in a rut. You don't want Iona to get a 10-point lead or higher against you. Strong rebound. A lot of contact. Mason came down. Looked like his face or chin landed on the shoulder of Taj Ridley. Ridley certainly took his share of contact there as well. Part of playing in this league, and when you get into conference play, no matter who you play against, it's going to be a battle. There are no more secrets. Everyone through their scouting reports knows what you guys do, and everyone has that dream about marching, in, uh, dancing in March, winning the conference tournament, going to the NCAA. Four guard look for Niagara. Thomas, the one post player, and he's going to be called for traveling. <laughs> Jamel Jenkins back into the game for the Gales. That gives Scott Machado a rare breather. Jenkins went to St. Pat's of Elizabeth. Nephew of the great Shaheen Holloway, who was an assistant coach here at Iona. Great point guard at Seton Hall, now an assistant at Seton Hall. Nice look, high post, low post. Ridley on the pass from Glover. And some of the foundation for this Iona program's success certainly belongs to Kevin Willard and his staff. Kevin Willard going on to Seton Hall. And Coach Clues coming in to replace him and just building on what that previous staff had started. Well, nice pass right there, Ridley to Glover. They just re redid what the flip side of the possession before. But you talked about Ralph, uh, Kevin Willard and his dad, Ralph Willard, a great coach, was with Rick Patino, was also at St. Dom's. That was one of uh, Timmy Clues' first bosses. And there's a lot of history between the Willards, Timmy, Long Island, and successful basketball. Some guy named Rick Patino as well. Mason. Mason again gets the long rebound. And he will go back to the line. A lot of contact inside. You can see Mason doesn't shy away from contact. Well, that's the beautiful thing, especially with Antoine Mason. He's going to keep battling. And when you're a redshirt freshman or a freshman in this league, you're telling these guys in Iona, hey, we're going to be here against you. We, we respect you, but we don't fear you. Antoine Mason averaging 13.7 points per game this season. His redshirt freshman year, and he played three seasons a year or three games a year ago before suffering a foot injury to cost him the rest of the season. You see big Mike Glover again. When you're a big guy, there he does a nice job of calling for the ball and a great job of delivering it. But his impact is being felt on this game in a lot of different ways, and that's why Iona's got the extended lead. Now eight of the 12 points for Glover have come here in the second half. Kyle Smythe back in for Iona. This is a real good shooting team. You're looking at Jenkins as a real good shooter. Smythe 
And then Momo, once he can play off the penetration of these two guys. Here is Smythe for two. And this is what we talked about with this group. And Momo Jones set that play up, throwing it from the baseline out to Smythe. He found them, and this is what good teams do. And by the way, Scott Machado just coming back from the locker room after receiving from treatment. And he appears to be ready to come back in whenever Coach Cluse deems it time. Glover really asserting himself. Another timeout coming by Niagara. This is the reason why. You knew if you were Joe Mahali coming into the game, what was going to be the answer to stop Glover? You did a great job in the first time. Cool, buddy. Coach Montalvo. But there was definitely the potential for problem. But to each of these guys' credit, it has worked out beautifully so far. Well, and the definition of great players is they make everyone around them better. And that's what Timmy was saying. He goes, Momo Jones has been special in that regard. He hasn't wanted to disrupt the flow of the game. Mason continues to struggle from the floor here in the second half. Green's pass deflected out of bounds. Niagara will keep it. And the guy who deflected it out of bounds was Glover. He's one of these guys. Again, Joe Mahalik is pulling out his hair, and rightfully so. The Gales have come out on fire. Inside the film room as our coaches break down the game plan that Sunday night here on ESPNU. Along with Tim O'Toole, this is Doug Sherman in New Rochelle, New York, just outside of New York City, where the Gales who come in with a record of 11-3 overall, 3-0 in the MAC, looking to remain the only unbeaten in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. And if you're Joe Mahalik right now, you're saying to yourself, all right, what can we do offensively right now to get this thing going so we're a little bit more comfortable in our sets? Moikobu just off the bench again, and much like he did in the first half, providing energy for Iona. Jenkins. Even Wanye right now. Right now is the time when he's got to start stepping up. You see him jogging through his cuts. They need his energy, too, because he is explosive on the offensive end. Again, the Gales playing here in the second half. Last couple of minutes without their point guard, Scott Machado. Glover fouled. Took it across the chops, and he will shoot, too. But one of the things that happened with Mike Glover, he was the first guy down the floor on that possession. And what makes him so valuable is that he plays 94 feet. And it appears to be some sort of hand or thumb injury for Scott Machado that sent him back into the locker room a few minutes ago. Back on the bench. Appears to be fine, but he continues to flex that right thumb. But as mentioned, the Gales have done just fine without him for the short term. There's the thumb. And again, a handful of NBA scouts come to every Iona game, primarily to look at Scott Machado. We've got, as we showed you, the general manager of the Lakers, Mitch Kupchak, here in town. Glover gets one out of two. He leads all scores now with 15 points. Green, who has been quiet here in the second half with a chance for three. And we talked about that on the last trip. When you think about Joe Mahalik and what he's got to do, you got to get the ball back in, in uh, Green's hands. Why? Because he's the guy that's putting a lot of pressure on Iona. He's finding ways to get to the basket, and he's going to be able to score for you. That was his first bucket of the second half. Now good to see Scott Machado back into the game with Jenkins going out. And we saw flashes in the first half of Wanye Green, the leading freshman scorer in the country at 20 points per game. He's got 12 so far here tonight. Nice look. Momo Jones hung in the air for an eternity but couldn't get the ball to go through the hoop. Niagara down 10 with a basketball. Big three-point shot from the corner. Cuts it quickly down to a seven-point game. Six straight points for the Purple Eagles. Thank you. 
Foul on Scooter Gillette. There is Wanye Green, freshman from Archbishop Carroll High School in Philadelphia. Here's where we think Scott Machado injured that right thumb. Yep. Certainly appears to be where the injury occurred. They had him go to the locker room for a couple of minutes. And I mean, Tim, you played college basketball at Fairfield. You played at a very high level. I mean, your fingers are vulnerable. You need those fingers not to be jammed. And when they are jammed, you can't do your job efficiently. Especially right now, if you're Timmy Clues, you're reminded of Mr. Machado. Hey, your job is to distribute. Let those big guys rebound. Let them break their fingers, not you. Because you're right, he's got to be on the floor for them, and they don't need any silly little injury. But you don't, you don't, you can't prevent all that. And he's got such great instinct to play this game. Gordon thought about it, second time up, he was off the mark, and then Glover is called for the foul. That is his third. And Glover signals over to his coach Tim Clouse, who looks at his assistant coaches and says. Should we take him out? Should we leave him in? And I think Timmy right now is saying, absolutely, you're staying in there, big fella. You've been the whole key to this second half for us. There he comes up with a loose ball. Machado tries to leave it for Smythe. Smythe. Ridley kept it alive in a rebounding foul. And it'll go against Niagara. I mean, Tanksley with the personnel. Yep, you're looking at Iona doing a good job. And the one thing they are great at, they get hands on balls. You see Smythe diving for it. Machado poked at it, but Glover was the guy that picked it up. Glover's also one of those guys, if he wanted to, in the old days, NFL scouts used to look at basketball players. When you think a guy like him, you think tight end yep. all the way. Yep. Well, it is not unprecedented. And he certainly has the body type that would make you think. And with his hands and with his explosion, he might be somebody who could intrigue an NFL scout. Nice matchup right now. They just switched off. You had Machado on green. Tanksley, tough shot, way off the mark. Long rebound, Smythe. Machado sees Jones. And look at Machado, never left the ground, yet used his body to get that rebound. Heady. Ridley has it taken away. Here comes Marvin Jordan. And he barrels over Machado. And this is what you love about Machado. And it might not be the prettiest game he's played up to this point, but watch him get back on defense. He, he does it in so many different ways. Again, this is just second. And so far tonight, he is six for seven. So again, 15 points on only seven shots. Well, and this is what we talked about, why at halftime the adjustment was made. You've got to get the ball to him. Because every time you get him on the inside, he's productive and he's going to get you points. I'm on back into the game for Iona. With Machado, DeZouvre, Jones, and Mike Glover. See, right now, Niagara switched to a 1 3 1. Joe again wants to give him a different look. Iona's deep into the shot clock on his possession. He won out. Armand with a hand in his face. Glover keeps it alive. DeZouvre with the putback. First two points for the senior from Montreal. It's back to a 10 point ball game. Machado to DeZouvre. Assist number eight for Machado. We talked about it all night, Tim. The Gales have such a deep and usable bench. DeZouvre, just another one of the pieces. On they, certain nights, you may not get anything from him, but on certain nights, you might get this sort of energy. Well, they've got it not only from him, but from Makubu. They've got it from a lot of guys, especially on that window on the offensive end. 
We haven't seen so much from Jenkins or Smythe who some nights, just like Armand, the three of them kind of rotate into the starting rotation. Coming off the bench, certain nights they play big minutes if they're hot and knocking down their shots. It hasn't worked, but they've had other people able to step up. Right, and one of the things, Niagara's did a really good job. Iona's rhythm is slightly off, and as you mentioned, guys like uh, Armand and Smythe and these guys, their timing's a little bit off. But when you get guys like Machado, all right, if the outside's not falling, let's take it to the inside. 11 points now for the 6'1 senior from Queens. Wanye Green from deep. Strong rebound again by DeZouvre. Jones from the baseline. Armand. And he is tied up. Good hustle. For the sophomore from Brooklyn. You see Machado again. He's just so heady. Finding open shooters that ended up resulting in baskets. Always heads up and he's looking. Iona does a great job of running the break and filling lanes. And why not? It's your turn. Now, well, preseason first team all Mac may wind up playing his way into being the player of the year in the conference. Averaging over 13 points and 10 assists per game. And he's just about at both of those marks here tonight. You're hitting that critical mass right now if you're Niagara. You got that sense they got to kind of keep scoring or Iona's going to go on a big run and open this up. But even look at Iona's defense. They're coming out further. They're more aggressive. Their hands are up. With two to shoot, Wanye Green is called for the charge. No basket. The charge on Wanye Green. Pretty good job by DeZouvre. He might have been moving a little bit, but you know what? When you go shoulder to shoulder and take the pop head on, you're going to get the charge call. And again, this is one of the things Iona's been doing a great job of. That was help defense that came. These guys play as a team. Time to shoot. Jones. Nice drive and dish. But Machado's heel was on the end line, so they turn it over. This is one of the few games you've seen Momo Jones. He's kind of he's lost his focus a little bit. I mean, that was a great play, and so what? He stepped out of bounds. But he's been kind of looking all over the place here. And he's too good of a player to be focused on other things besides what's happening on the floor. Thomas, blocked by Armand, and then taken away by Glover. Mike Glover trying to go coast to coast, and he is tied up by Jordan. For guys like Thomas, and you're on the interior, you're a freshman in this league, when you see guys like all about parity, it always has been and it always will be, and all you're trying to do is keep your team building and improving. So we can update those standings and put a one in the loss column for Fairfield. Iona sits alone atop the standings. And for me, Tim, I don't know about for a coach, it's never too early to scoreboard watch. No, it's true. And you don't want these guys to take their eyes off the prize. And that's what Timmy Kluse's message to them was today. His pitch in the walkthrough was high. And because he didn't want them to get complacent, you have to stay in the present. And if you start watching other things, that's when you get snake bit. Niagara led by as many as five in the first half. Trailed by four at the intermission. And Iona has inched away here in the second half. Strong move by Marvin Jordan. But to Niagara's credit, based on the fact that the first time these two teams met back in early December, Niagara was just blown out 
it's not a bad trip so far to New Rochelle for Niagara. Actually, if you're Joe, I think you're relatively pleased in a lot of different ways. I mean, you, you're right in this thing. Your defense is doing everything they're supposed to. They've been aggressive. Look at their hands still up and attacking and getting deflections right there. You know, they haven't backed down at all. And again, this is a very young and inexperienced Niagara team against a veteran, senior-laden Iona club. And there you see the sophomore and freshman classes account for nearly 90% of the scoring for Niagara. And with that, youth comes growing pains. But one of the things Joe talked earlier about was just, hey, you keep teaching, you keep working, because you know the fruits of these labors is going to show themselves off in a big-time way as they get older. Near follow slam by DeZouvre. Chance for three. Niagara still very much alive. Antoine Mason with the strong move. Good take by Mason. You see him heads up, play pass by Green. This is what you got to do. You got to attack the basket, especially at the end of the game, because theoretically what Iona does not want to do is foul and stop the clock. And his dad, watching from the corner of the gymnasium, has watched his son struggle from the perimeter here in the second half, so he takes it to the bucket, like you said, Coach. No, and that's another way to score. <laughs> Iona by 10, happy to work some clock. Jones, Machado, and Jenkins in the backcourt. Machado, 12 pounds leaner than he was last year, much more capable of getting into the lane and elevating like that really love his demeanor and when you mention he's 12 pounds lighter when you're a senior and you had the career that he's had you're always thinking about how do i get to the next level one thing is your body you've got to be a professional you take care of, of, of your body and then also your game and he's done that well, he said he feels much more like a pro after his experience with the under 21 brazilian team in china over the summer he was playing with men and learned from them Join us Saturday on ESPNU for an exciting day of college hoops featuring five teams that are in the top 25. Tipping off at noon Eastern with third-ranked Duke against Georgia Tech, followed by 15th-ranked Kansas taking on Oklahoma at 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Notre Dame against 10th-ranked Louisville, 6 Eastern back to the ACC with number 23 Virginia facing Miami. And then unbeaten and 18th-ranked Murray State. Caps things off at 8 o'clock, taking on Austin P. That's five games featuring five ranked teams tomorrow on ESPNU, and it's the first time in the history of the network that they have had five straight games featuring ranked opponents. Uh, Tony Bennett has done an unbelievable job resurrecting the Virginia Wahoo program as well. There you see the four remaining unbeatens with undefeated Syracuse on top, longest winning streak in the with the eight-point lead. It was as large as 13 midway through the second half, but to Niagara's credit, still hanging around with under 90 seconds to go. There's a foul on the inbound, and this is what Niagara, when you have a young club like Niagara, and this is why Joe's got to be thrilled with just the effort that these guys have given, because they're still in this game, and a lot of things can happen. But you have to teach young guys how to win at Division I. You know, when you come from a freshman, you're seven months removed from the prom, and now you're playing against guys like Mike Glover. There's a heck of a learning curve that goes on. And for these freshmen, a lot of times, that's a painful curve. But for these guys to come in after they got smashed by 36 up in Niagara, to be fighting this game in three possession, heck of a job. Take another look at Scott Machado when he first injured that right thumb, and he continues to favor that thumb. But he is still on the floor. Just had a chat with the lead official, Mike Kitts. I wonder if he thinks Mike Kitts is an orthopedic and might give him some good advice. <laughs> Wouldn't shock me if Kitts could do that. Now, Machado, we talked about how he shed the weight. He also spent his summer taking a 1,000 shots a day. He had heard that Kemba Walker did that, and that's how Kemba got better. And he wants to follow Kemba to the NBA, and so that is part of the regimen that he put himself through to get ready for his senior year. 
Glover is foul. You mentioned that story about guys taking a thousand shots, and the guy I always think about is a gentleman by the name of Al Harrington, who played at the same high school as Jermell Jenkins, St. Pat's and Elizabeth. You know, guys will talk about taking a thousand shots, but literally what happens is it takes over five hours to do. And so when you think about the time guys like Machado have to put in to get themselves better, it's a heck of a commitment. Because the other thing that happens when you take a thousand shots, your hands are killing you. Glover's had the big second half, only four points before the break. He's up to not, uh, 18 points. And as you see, only six of seven from the floor. He's only taken those seven, well, those are from the free throw line, but from the floor, that's the same number. He has been so efficient as usual. And we talked about the warrior mentality, that Hopi Indian idea that you take nothing from the tribe. He hasn't hunted shots. He goes and gets the ball just in the natural flow, and that's what makes him so special. Second foul on Machado. And so Marvin Jordan, who has mentioned missed Niagara's last game with a bruised knee, coming off the bench here tonight. And he has provided a nice offensive spark. Now with 13 points. One of the things that was always challenging in this league, especially as a player and a coach, was the quick turnaround between Friday night and Sunday afternoon. You know, you're talking about for Niagara, they've got to get on a bus. By the time they get up to Albany, you're sitting there looking about 2 or 3 in the morning. The guys are going to be hungry. They're going to have to wake up, get back tomorrow, figure out how to prepare for Siena, and then pitch it up uh, Sunday afternoon. And the same for the Gales. They're going to have to go to Maris, a place Chucky Martin's got his team playing well. It's always been tough to play in. Joe Mahalik's club on Sunday, as you mentioned, that's a 1 o'clock tip. So with a late tip tonight and the early tip on Sunday, it's a quick turnaround. The Iona game on Sunday at Marist up in Poughkeepsie is a 2 o'clock start. Sunday nights at 6 Eastern, ESPNU is your home for ACC action. This week, ACC Sunday Night Basketball presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups tips off as Maryland takes on North Carolina State. Coverage beginning at 5.30 Eastern with the ACC Sunday Night Basketball pregame show. ACC Sunday Night Basketball on ESPNU, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Iona leads the country in wins away from home this year with nine. They have had a Terrific odyssey away from New Rochelle, coming back to play a game here for the first time in over a month, and by and large, they've done all right. They've done extremely well. There's the foul by Smythe, but one of the things Coach Krzyzewski used to talk about when, he was, when I was down at Duke with him was that you have to introduce your teams to adversity. And when you play this... And that's for non-televised games, so that the officials no matter whether the game's on TV or not, can make sure they have the best opportunity to get every call right. Well, and I think that's in fairness, and that goes to the league and the commitment and Ridge Jenzer, and you want to make sure that you've given these kids the best opportunity to succeed. And there is one of them. If you're a fan who comes into this arena, Heinz Athletic Center, you wouldn't notice it up there, but we noticed them during shoot-around today that for the small conferences, only three leagues in the country, including the MAC, have done that this year. And it's a terrific next step to again try and make sure that the officials have every tool available to them to get it right. Right, and because the bottom line is this. What the officials want is to make the right calls to give the players and the coaches and the fans the best opportunity to win. And it was as fair as possible. There's Machado still on the floor. Playing through a thumb injury that he sustained earlier here in the second half. One 
Kanye Green had a big first half. Not so much here in the second half. And it's interesting. We talked about that at the Open. When you think about this team, it's high voltage. But how do you sustain it when you're a young club? And as you mentioned, Wanya Green, you can see he's got boatloads of ability. But how do you sustain it? Not only the course of a 40-minute game, but over the course of the season. When you talked about steak and sizzle off the top. What do you think about how this barbecue has gone here tonight? Well, I think it's been great on both ends. I think when you think about Iona, they are the steak of this league. You saw Fairfield go up to Siena. With the same type of success when Timmy Welsh was here, Jeff Rulin as a coach. You had guys that were great players, and Iona was the, the, the flagship of this league. Jenkins retreats to get the basketball. And who knows, maybe this Iona team, either Machado, either Glover, perhaps they will wind up being the first Iona Gale to play in the NBA since... Sean Green, who you coached back in the day. You know, Sean Green, it's interesting, his nickname was Rise when he was here, and he just had such an unbelievable game where he elevated. But much like Sean Green, and this is what Timmy's trying to do here as well, and so is Joe. Sean Green went to NC State and transferred, and this league was a league where you tried to get those types of players so that you could compete at that high level, and you were able to have opportunities to coach pros, and Rise was one of them. Yep, I was going to say the exact same thing, and uh, this has been a program, Iona, that has welcomed transfer students and coach Kluse talked about the fact that he likes having older more mature players who he doesn't have to coach from day one physically more mature as well and two of those guys proving the pudding is Mike Glover at Momo Jones there's a potential downside to it you've got to be careful because guys aren't leaving other programs without the potential for problems but so far this year it's certainly worked out very well for Tim Kluse and his Gales and there is Mike Glover who started his college days for Bobby Gonzalez at Seton Hall and then eventually worked his way here to Iona and he talked about how much he enjoys playing with not only these kids on the team because he loves the players so they've got great chemistry but the people out of Iona have really welcomed him and that goes to the administration to the faculty and to the student body he was telling us how much he loves this school Joe Mahalik told us this afternoon three Iona Gales in his estimation could play in any league in the country meaning Machado Jones and Glover two of them began at power six conferences and Machado certainly has grown into that type of player really has he is special and he's fun to watch and for the first time in 11 years the Iona Gales are going to begin the conference portion of their schedule four and O. Oh, a much more workmanlike performance than the usual high-flying Iona Gales, but effective nonetheless. Mike Glover, our Pepsi Max player of the game. Big second half, 15 of the 19 coming since the intermission. When you think about how...